Right guys, hello, another video for you, Project Wingman. I've had my eye on this for quite some time and I'm very excited. It's just released December 1st. So if you don't know what it is, if it's flown under your radar, think Ace Combat, but we can do the entire campaign in VR. That's a pretty big deal. Ace Combat 7 on PC, there is no VR support. PlayStation users, they had VR support for just free missions, which is kind of cool, but equally lame at the same time to only have free mission so what i want to do we'll break the video down as i always do with timestamps i want to go over the settings and controls to help people out and we're going to do some gameplay in vr you don't have to play it in vr but as i've got a rift s and i've got a hotas got a joystick and a throttle i might as well get my money's worth so i have played it a little bit my only real complaint is in vr interacting with the user interface because i still have to use the keyboard and mouse so those of you that have a sim pit and you have a keyboard and mouse on a desk away from it, that'll be an issue. Lots of people like to have the keyboard and mouse in the sim pit with them. If you've done that, good job. You're going to find uh, things a little bit easier. Uh, hopefully they can patch these issues out. But let's go through the settings to help people with controls. I highly advise, if you want to do this in VR, uh, load it up on your monitor first to do the controls. And the reason is, as you try to bind stuff, you're going to just move your head and it picks it up as a mouse movement and you really don't want to deal with that aggro so we see to the left it says calibration so i can move my joystick as i put it back forwards roll it left and right my throttle is working uh yeah i can shoot my gun missiles and test all my buttons out but you guys will want to set it up to what suits you so let's do key bindings we'll talk things through it might be difficult for you to read the small print but we'll talk it through so we've got change camera now i've set it up i've got the t16000m hotas pack from thrustmaster i've got the twcs throttle so on my throttle there's a little mini stick so clicking that in i have set that to change camera now on the monitor I'll go through two views in the cockpit and then to an external camera which is kind of useful in vr mode that resets centers your view useful to know change target i have bound on the throttle for my ring finger so as i tap that it will change my targets now on the monitor if i hold it down it will lock the view on that target now in vr i can move my head around and look it's incredibly intuitive and very very useful on a monitor, I could use the mini stick to look around. That's a little bit more tricky. So the padlock view is incredibly useful. We've got expand map. I've set that to the pinky button on my TWCS throttle. Gunfire is on the joystick. It is the main trigger under my pointer finger. I've got hide or unhide the UI. That will hide the HUD. I've set that to the button on the joystick grip under the hat switch. We'll call it the middle button. So we've got missile launch again on the joystick grip, left side of that hat switch. SP module, special weapons. That's the right side of the hat switch on the joystick grip. I don't want arcade controls. I don't want mouse control. We've got weapon one, two, three, four. So on my throttle, I've got a hat switch. I go left, up, down, right. So weapon one is left. Weapon two is up. Weapon three is right. Weapon four is down now the reason i've done that is in the game it does have like a display and it shows that weapon one is to the left so just to make things intuitive when you're looking at the screen i'd suggest you do that you don't have to you can have weapon one is up if you want but i've tried to make life easy on myself i've got weapon cycle which i don't really need as i can manually select but i've set that as the orange button at the base of my throttle i can hit that with my thumb so we've got the axis bindings here. It's already set up for keyboard and mouse and game pads, but I want to set it up with the joystick. So pitch axis, I've just clicked that and pulled back on the stick and I've inverted it. So when I pull back, the nose goes up. When I push forwards, the nose goes down because that's how planes fly. I've got the roll axis, so I've clicked that, move left on the joystick to set that axis. I don't need to invert it thrust axis so i've clicked on that and set moving my throttle forwards and backwards now i did need to invert that so forwards we go faster as we bring it towards us back it slows us down i've got view padlock x axis so with my mini stick i've moved that left we can move it right to set the x x axis for looking around i don't really need it in vr but if i'm going to play it on the monitor 
that's kind of useful the y-axis again on that little mini stick which is up and down and I did invert that so as I move it up I look up uh, we've got the your axis now I can do this a number of ways I can either twist my stick but I also have paddles at the front of the throttle left and right to do the rudder I also have rudder pedals so I have set rudder pedals it says uh, the throttle axis 7 that's because my pedals are plugged into the throttle but it's also set to twist on the joystick we've got curves and dead zones you can calibrate that so dead zone 25% I've actually left that at default that seems okay if you put it to zero it'll be very very sensitive and you just end up rolling out of control but you can tinker around with the pitch roll and thrust axis as much as you want yeah I might put the dead zone down a little bit but I seem to do okay uh, we've got calibration there so we can just make sure we know what we're doing so change target map change that's resetting the camera view so we're all good got the miscellaneous tab so novice controls I'm not a novice I don't want mouse aim got hat function there we're all we're all good we can uh, head into the video settings really quickly so I'll just tell you now that I have a 980 Ti, so that was a top end card, I don't know, five years ago. By today's standards, it's pretty middle of the road, and yet the game has maxed all the settings out. So a modern equivalent, I don't know, would be like a 1660 Ti or Soup or whatever they called it. Uh, so the generation before, if you've got a 1070, 1070 Ti, you're roughly on par with me. Um, if you've got a 980, that's roughly on par with a 1060. So that's weaker than what I've got, but you should probably still get some pretty good settings out of the game. And it does look pretty good in VR and on a monitor. So we'll just back out. We can get on and play a little bit of the game. So we've got a conquest mode there. There sadly is no multiplayer at the moment. I don't know if they will add that in in the future. We'll do conquest in a separate video. We'll just go through one of the campaign missions so let's let's do a new campaign i'll play on normal i hate playing games too easy but as i'm doing live commentary as i play i don't want to make it too difficult on myself so let me just recenter that camera again so i don't know if you can read that with the vr capture generations ago a global cataclysmic event scorched the whole world newly exposed and volatile material combined with an earth-shattering tectonic collapse dismantling civilization's whole the world order was destroyed history as we know it changed forever but from the ashes a new era began hundreds of years have passed humanity is now in a time known as after calamity we will recognize the jets that we fly but it's not the world as we know it it's like a alternative reality so say mercenary agency sicario court i'm pretty sure in spanish or portuguese sicario means hitman hitman is the name of my flight group should kick in with a briefing now and the voice acting is incredibly good to be fair i'll try and let you listen to it i'll shut my mouth our contract with this backwater place is just about to come to an end and well thank god I don't mind a tropical vacation every once in a while, but it's not very glamorous, considering we're here to work. Anyway, one last thing before the defense minister releases our contract, and we move on to bigger and better. Hitman Tim, you haven't gotten all that much airtime this deployment, so you're taking point with this operation. We have confirmed the location of the Burlock Privateer headquarters off the coast on the southwestern edge of the Jesta Island chain. They're a mercenary group like us, who unfortunately have turned out right piracy. According to surveillance data, we have determined that they are the culprit of the recent high-profile hijacking of the Federation-registered cargo ship May Lynx. The May Lynx is supposedly carrying volatile cargo belonging to the Federation's Department of Global Energy and Sustainability Office. Nothing specific from the Federation contact about the cargo, however, our orders are to retrieve it if possible, or to neutralize it if we can't. Attempts to negotiate for it have turned up with nothing, so we're going in. Hitman team, you are to approach the island from the south along with support and establish control over the area. 
Your objective is to eliminate any surrounding anti-air and resistance on the island. After that, secure an LZ for our operator group Ronin to ascertain the cargo. Once Ronin lands, maintain air superiority until the next stage of the operation is determined. Be aware that the Burlocks have other Merc pilots on tap, so enemy reinforcements could be a factor. Normally, we'd stay out of contact with any Federation-adjacent taskings. But this is the last thing we need to do for a Kirk contract, so I'll let it slide. Two birds with one stone. Easy enough, right? Now get to work. Dismissed. Alright, so just in case you couldn't hear that, quite simple. We fly in, we blow up the patrol boats, we take out any aircraft. Our special forces, codenamed Ronin, will land. We maintain air superiority. Seems simple enough. So it's saying press start, escape to continue. Now here become here starts my issues with controlling it in VR. I'll click on the joystick, it's doing nothing. I click the mouse, it's doing nothing. I need to find the escape key on my keyboard. So I need to peek under the VR headset. There we go. Hopefully they can patch that out. It's just a very, very minor annoyance. So we've got start mission there, mission briefing, files. So I'll just, that yellow dot is where I'm looking in the VR headset. We'll start mission. All right, so I've got a choice of planes. These are trainers, but as I've it's remembered my strike phantom, which I unlocked by playing a game. So that's kind of cool. We'll, we'll use that. But there's a MiG-21 trainer, F-4 phantom trainer. I could have bought the MiG-21 Inceptor, but I went with the strike phantom. So there we go. It's got quite a nice camouflage pattern on it. Now I need to select my weapons. So we've got multi-purpose, a high impact missile. Is that 48 of those? I'll take the uh, triple bombs, drop three of those, and I've got the multi-lock air-to-air. -air. So there's different color schemes I'm sure I can buy, different paint jobs. As we complete missions, we get money, but that'll do. We shall launch into the mission. I'm just gonna throttle up. Dump my throttle too low or we'll stall in the air. So it's saying press start key, start key to commence mission. Now the trigger works. Go figure. All right, Operation Black Flag. The control, the graphics are actually pretty good. The clouds a little bit meh, but good enough. Uh, the sunset or sunrise looks brilliant. I can see scratches on the cockpit canopy. It looks like an F4 Phantom. Maybe it's a MiG-21. I overtook that Tomcat. If the HUD looks a little bit off in the recording, that's just the recording software. I see it straight down the middle of the screen. Uh, but when you record in VR, it tends to favor the left or right eye. So I've got this boy locked up. We'll take that out with a missile. Target destroyed. You can see I've got my multi-function display, my little radar map there. So it's given me some little tutorial prompts to cycle targets. See so we've got some fast movers, hostile jets, in the area of operations. So out of range at the moment. It. We've got tone with fire. Target destroyed. Now I have played this on the monitor and the real difference in VR, short of the head tracking, which is incredibly useful and immersive, is that I do get an in incredible sense of speed as I'm just over the top of the ocean. It feels absolutely amazing. And I've said the graphics really are quite impressive and it runs incredibly well which is the main thing the other thing that impressed me is I bought this on steam it's about just under 20 pound and it also supports the oculus sdk as well as loading in steam vr depending on what headset you use so that's that's pretty awesome to see not many games do that it usually gets patched in later out. i've got a couple of fast movers up there let's get this patrol boat we try the, the multi-lock missile. Lock 
one, we lock two, missiles away. Good kill. CDAA fire. Coming from the islands. The multi lock missiles will not work on ground targets, it's only anti air. Let's head back round to the islands. Little cursor to show me where my bombs are going to land. Good effect on target. Switch to my missiles, back to the patrol boat. this is a lot of fun I'm a big fan of DCS I do like flight sims but not everyone's got the patience to learn all the startup procedures I should point out you can't use your VR controllers to steer or interact with the cockpit in any way no the joystick in the cockpit isn't moving with my throttle which is a little bit of a shame but overall the immersion is very very good being sat in the cockpit really really enjoying it Developers for this game clearly are big fans of Ace Combat. For the money, I think it's an absolute bargain. So we just use our rudder to get on target. My wingmen don't seem to be doing too much. Looking at the target, bring the plane, line it up. It's a hit, but they're not dead. Finish him off with guns. Good kill. We're flying to the sun and then we'll swing back round for that final AA. There's my bombs. Miss. Let's loop over, see if we can't lock it up. Miss on the way. So we've got a couple of F4 Phantoms trying to scramble off the runway. Good yeah, got them both with the bombs. The 
multi-lock missiles away. Two down. I need to jink a missile. He's coming right. Target destroyed. these trails and the missiles flying through the sky. Miss with that missile. We'll stay on him. Got hit with guns. Let's see if we can finish him off. Missile it is. Looks like a friendly Tomcat. maintained air superiority, we'll let our special forces do their work. Angels 9, 9,000 feet. See a cargo ship down there. IFF is identify friend or foe. Looks like they're giving me a new target. Let's take out this lighthouse. Pretty sure we'll get bonus points for taking everything out. That's what I heard on the radio anyway. Sanitize the area. Lighthouse destroyed. Comms tower. So I'm pulling high G's. There is no blackout or red out where you push the blood out or too much of it into your head. If you lose the blood, you black out. If you push too much in, you red out. Leaves the cargo ship. You can see droplets of, of water on the canopy. Oh, 
what you call a secondary explosion. Friendly's coming in. That's it, mission complete. Got bonus payout, two Money grand. Through from this contract, and our opportunities in this region have just about dried up. Yes, we did get extra points for the lighthouse and the com town. They were worth bombing. Effect, pack your bags. I looked a little into the Cascadian situation, and I believe we'll make a little something of ourselves there. So as always, points mean prizes. Will let us buy better jets. And so on. So I think we'll leave the video there, guys. It's not meant to be a review. Just give you a quick look, see if it's uh, your cup of tea, this game. Come back, we'll do another video for the Conquest mode. So have a great day, have a great evening, whatever it is you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I shall see you when I see you next. Ciao for now.